How about now? Can people hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I see my voice going up and down now. Okay. Okay, I'll let's start again. Uh, <laughs> welcome in, everyone. This is Hedgepig. And um, <laughs> um, thank you for coming in on a long holiday weekend to see my show. Um, I really appreciate that. I am a food and drink streamer, for those who do not know me. Here at Twitch, my having funny things happen again. Okay. Um, and I like cooking uh, comfort food and just about anything else really that catches my attention. Uh, I was taught to cook by my gra by my paternal grandmother um, when I was ten years old, and I've been cooking for the last forty four years, uh, learning reading cookbooks, watching PBS uh, chefs when I was young and they didn't have internet yet. And uh, then I started watching the uh, I started watching the um, Food Network and things like that. By that time I had a pretty good uh, I had a pretty good collection of cookbooks books. I mean, I scoured the internet trying to find recipes that my family had lost uh, through unexpected deaths and recipes that were old family recipes that never got passed down because of that. And uh, it sort of gradually led to a food obsession um, for recipes and old, especially old recipes and heritage recipes and um, so a lot of my cooking springs out of that. And uh, today uh, we are going to be making uh, loaded potato soup, uh, really more of a chowder because I like the pieces bigger. Um, but it is basically everything you would put on a baked potato. It's going to have uh, sour cream and bacon bits and cheddar cheese, and it's going to have some... Uh, green onion on it and it's just going to be absolutely yummy and um, it makes for a very good side to um, a meal or add in a salad and uh, a little bit more bacon and you've pretty much got a meal. I just have a little pile here of little potato eyes that I have been cutting out. Yes, that's right. And maiming potatoes, I have been cutting their little eyes out because unfortunately, although the, the potato eyes won't harm you, um, they're not, excuse me, they're not attractive and um, they do leave a little dark spot that's, well, it's unattractive. I'd rather have my food look nice too, as well as taste nice. So I am going to be doing something a little strange for me. I am going to be making only a half, uh, half recipe of these of this potato soup because we have so much food in the house right now. We don't really have room to store it. So I'm going to try to make a half a small batch. And when I told yes, <laughs> when I told my husband that uh, over. Uh, discord earlier and said I was going to be trying to do it um, he said he was playing a computer game at the time and right after it popped up where I said I was going to be making a half a half batch something in the game laugh so it's the universe itself laughing at me I, I tend to cook large batch things and um, so keep that in mind if you go to discord and look up my stream recipes that very often it makes a very large batch and that is intentional on my part because the way I like to cook is not every day so what I do is I tend to make large batches of things and we keep out a meal or two we have the meal that we cook we have maybe another meal after that for the most part and then the rest of it we freeze and put away in our chest freezer so at some point when i don't feel like cooking say the other four days of the week uh we just go get whatever it is we want to get out of the freezer and then we can just 
you know, heat it in the microwave six minutes. We have a good uh, home cooked meal. And, you know, one day I may decide what I really want to do is have some um, of the stuffed bell pepper soup. Well, Andrew may decide what he wants is the hamburger stuffing with gravy on it. And, you know, so he gets that and I get what I want and we're both happy. And when we used to work outside the house, we would take those frozen meals for lunches and people would say, oh, where'd you get that? <laughs> because it usually smelled, well, like real food instead of uh, what you would get out of a TV dinner which is ultra, ultra processed and full of sodium, which really isn't very good for you, and lots and lots of preservatives. So we are, I had hoped today that uh, I would get in my first piece of merchandise that I had ordered that from Cooking with Hedge Pigs. Um, and it was supposed to be delivered today, but UPS decided to give it to the post office for final delivery. And the post office said, yeah, we're done for the day. So we won't be able to get it until Tuesday, but I will be able to show you it on the Wednesday stream, which is my next stream after this one. So back to what I was saying, we are talking about um, baked potato soup. Normally that leaves the peel on and I don't especially like to do that. So I take them off and I'm just calling it potato soup instead of baked potato soup. But the idea is there. It's pretty much the same. Um, I do want to encourage you if you have any questions during stream, uh, go ahead and ask. If I don't see it, Andrew will poke me in and I'll be able to then see it. So uh, because my monitor is actually to my side and what I'm doing is dead in front of me, of course. So this is at a 90 degree angle from me and I can't always see what's going on there. Uh-oh, uh we have a visitor. Oh. <laughs> I was Andrew coming in and poking me. So I have now been poked. <laughs> Anyway, anybody got big plans for this weekend? I am going to start out by doing the usual. I'll get the aromatics going, which is basically the onion in this case. Normally it would have garlic in it too. I'm allergic to garlic. If you want to add garlic to this recipe, I would, at this amount, I would only add um, one uh, garlic clove. Um, crushed and you know diced fine and anything more than that and it would be really garlicky this this full recipe if I was going to make a full recipe would have about six potatoes as you see I'm doing a half one and I'm using a very small onion so I am going to start out with this onion here and I always cut off the sprout end of the onion. So if you're looking at if you're looking at an onion as if it was this green onion here, the sprout end is the end that it grows from, which is the end I cut off. And this is the root end, which has all these little roots on it, which in a regular onion you just see is this little kind of dark nubbly area. So you leave this intact because it keeps the onion together. This binds all of the layers of the onion together so it doesn't separate out when you're cutting it. So I am going to now cut through the middle of this carefully with my hand out of the way when I cut. And now I have it cut in half, which gives me a nice flat surface to cut on. And then I will cut the levels in here, not all the way through. Because if I do, what's the point in having kept the uh, root end on? And then you lay it down flat and you cut down the other way. Again, careful of your fingers always. Um, onions are crispy little things and they can sometimes resist the knife a little bit. So you want to make sure of where your fingers are. So when the knife suddenly gives 
gets through it, you don't want it going through your finger as well. So I am going to make this a rather small dice because I do not want it to be uh, intrusive in the soup. And onions will pretty much cook away if you cook the soup long enough. This is, however, a very quick soup. Yeah, you do need to sharpen the blades again, sweetheart. Um, they're starting to get a little um, unsharp, dulled. I like to make up my own words. This, for those of you who don't know, is a sandwich cutting thing. This is a sandwich cutting thing, uh, which I said once quite famously to my husband when I said I needed a sandwich cutting thing because I couldn't think of the word knife at the moment. So, hey, it's exciting when you're in your 50s. What can I say? All right, there's that half. And then start again on this piece. I'm using my fingernails actually to kind of hold it in place. Another good reason why before you cook, you should always not only wash your hands, but wash underneath your fingernails as well, because, you know, all kinds of stuff gets trapped in there uh, as you go about your day, and uh, you really don't want that ending up in your food, um, whether that's dust or dirt or, you know, whatever. Uh, better to be safe, better to be clean, not have to enter that particular bacteria into your food you're cooking. So, I know I'm not the fastest uh, slicing person in the world. That comes with the formal chef training I didn't actually have. The more important part is that the pieces that I cut are the same size because what you are trying to do is keep the same items the same size. Hey, Carrie, welcome in. Hey, that works. Housework is good. If you want to come over here, I'll give you a bowl of soup. <laughs> I now have a five-quart Dutch oven, which is hard anodized aluminum from Cuisinart. You can find links to the equipment that I use in my Discord. And if you want to get what I'm using, and some of my little devices are kind of nifty, like this little board scraper here that picks up the uh, diced vegetables and stuff so you don't have to do it with your hand. And uh, it's neater, basically. It catches more than your hand does, at least than my hand does because for my hand size. Um, I am going to take about a quarter stick of butter here and chop it up into a couple pieces so that it melts easier. And I'm going to put it into my Dutch oven. And I am going to turn that up to a little bit over a medium heat and then put the rest of the butter aside for now. And that's actual butter. You could make it with, um, you could make it with margarine if you need to be dairy free. You could make this, uh, the add-ons, you could use vegan cheese, you could use the uh, brand from Tofuti called Better Than Sour Cream, and it's basically silken tofu. And uh, they also have cream cheese, which is better than cream cheese. And again, it's very, it's, it's silken tofu. One is just thicker than the other. And it makes it so that uh, you have a soy-based um, dairy replacement. You do not, however, have to use that. You can use, um, they have a lot of other plant-based uh, replacements as well. So it, whatever your store happens to carry, I know that there are several different brands. So if you need to be dairy-free or you want to be uh, vegan, uh, or vegetarian. There's lots of different plant-based things, and uh, I am, as a matter of fact, mostly vegetarian. I'm about 90%. I try to eat meat. doesn't always work out. 
Oh, good. I'm so glad. I will have the recipe up after stream. And this is a small batch again. Cue Andrew's laughter. Uh, this is a small batch. <laughs> um, the game he was on when I told him that I was going to be trying to make a small batch of soup laugh. The game laughed. Yeah, exactly. Small batch. Uh, my husband laughed too. Um, which probably means I will not have the problem I did last night when I was making the tuna casserole and the noodles that I put in here filled this and I had to get the full size. I had to have Andrew get me the full size uh, crock pot or stock pot, pardon me. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is put the onions in there to start browning and that is on about a medium to medium high heat. The next thing, and that was one small sweet onion diced. This is some celery. I'm getting towards the center of the stalk here, so the celery stalks are very small. I would say two stalks of celery um, for this half batch, but uh, I'm using three because these are practically half size anyway. Um, except for the last one that was full length. As you're celery head goes in the stalks get progressively um shorter so it's an interesting thing um i am going to dice this as well but i'm going to make it a little bit larger of a dice <laughs> we don't do small in this household yeah i don't usually either so this would have been a very large stock pot these are fairly large baked potatoes but uh i would have made it with six to eight i'm making it with three to try to make it small because we still have the uh cauliflower uh chowder with uh chicken in the refrigerator it's uh, i don't know it's still around and um then of course i added a huge pot of um tuna casserole the leftovers filled a 15 cup storage bowl so you can get the idea of what that batch was hey jake welcome in i'm glad to see you i'm glad to see you how's everything going is everything is everything good with school and all So that's the story behind me trying to make a small batch. It will probably still fill my crock pot here, my, my stock pot, but it's, it's at least a small one. Yeah, it always works that way. It's like they ramp up to the end of the year and they, they lead you along and you start out saying, this won't be so bad. And then they hit you at the end of the year with everything that's, you know, crammed in there because of snow days and everything else that goes in there it just gets more and more intense. So just the way it is, it doesn't change, you know, well. After grade school, it changes. You get to junior high school, it gets worse. High school, worse. College, worse. College is a serious, mandatory, study every day thing. So that's. Yeah. Andrew said, way to make him feel better. Well, the thing is, is once you get the habit in there and you, you buckle down, it's really not that hard. You just, you have to make a habit of it. And, and, once you very mindfully put yourself forward, uh, you just do it. It just becomes second nature. I mean, that's the point of, of creating a habit. You start out the way you mean to continue, and then you make yourself do it. So it's, it's like anything. If you want to keep your house clean, you have to, you know, give yourself an evening a week to, to, pick, to pick things up so that on the weekend you're ready just to do the, the, the rest of the bits. So. And then you just, it's a habit. I mean, when I was growing up, Saturday was always cleaning day. That was just the way it was. That was the day the rooms got, bedrooms got cleaned. That was the day the bathrooms got cleaned. I vacuumed and dusted 
probably three days a week. And um, that was mostly just because of my allergies were so bad. But uh, it also kept the house nice and dust free and clean. And it was just, that was the routine. So routines are important, not just for animals. They're, they're important for people too. So I have got onions and celery in here right now. And that was the equivalent of two stalks full-size celery, one small sweet onion or half of a large one. And I am going to add about a half of a teaspoon of rubbed sage. That's part of the aromatic. Sage is actually very aromatic. Um, I am going to add in some parsley too. And that's partly because it has a really nice herbal flavor, but it's also very pretty and it's high in iron. So I'm adding a tablespoon in there. And then I will stir that around while I cut up the carrots. This is a pretty simple recipe. It's got, at this point, it's got uh, three potatoes, three big baking potatoes that it's going to have put in it. Uh, it has a small sweet onion. It has uh, two stalks of full-size stalks of celery. It's gonna have about a half a cup of baby carrots in it, sliced. And I am still using my lovely uh, rainbow carrots for this and that's because it just adds prettiness and and strangely these little exotics right now are cheaper than the regular ones i don't know why it just is so i'm good with that and they do add some nice appearance to the food that you're cooking so that's always good it's so like I said, it's going to have about a half a cup of these um, just sliced into little discs that are maybe an eighth of an inch wide. So they're not thick. They do need to cook fairly quickly to come together in the soup. And then it's going to have um, vegetable stock put into it. And it is about six cups of vegetable stock. And then it will have um, salt and pepper to taste. And I will make a bechamel. It's one of the seven mother sauces. They are mother sauces. There are only seven of them in the whole world that every sauce is based on. So that's kind of interesting if you didn't know that before. Um, then I will be adding a secret ingredient. The secret ingredient to this recipe is cream cheese. Cream cheese melted into that bechamel sauce makes it a cheese sauce, but it will work to thicken the soup like as if I had just, just put the, the regular bechamel in it. However, it will have a richer depth to it. It will be um, quite creamy and smooth velvety is the good word for it and it is just delicious hey weevil how you doing welcome in i appreciate you coming to see me this is my friend weevil he is a variety streamer can we get a shout out for weevil and for um kiri um, they are both variety streamers I'm doing better. I'm I'm finally doing well enough. I'm going to start getting into a regular streaming schedule again. Although, as an announcement, I, it is changing. My streaming schedule is switching to uh, from Tuesdays and Saturdays to um, Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, Wednesday. What was that? Carrie. I would like to have Kirby shouted out. Anyway, they are both variety streamers in gaming. Uh, I met them through the long dark. They're lots of fun to watch them uh, do their gaming, and uh, I recommend them highly. Um, 
and the long dark community pretty much all knows each other <laughs> it's a great community they're they're wonderful people and they tend to lean heavy towards chefs and cooks and foodies so that's interesting <laughs> i'm not so sure i like that carrot Let's see if i can find another one that's purple you'll do okay so i've got another purple carrot here This is, except for the chopping, a fairly simple soup. It should come together in less than an hour. It's going to be a little bit longer because I'm talking while I'm doing all of this. So I'm uh, stopping and showing you things. Um, basically, what we're doing here is called sweating the onions and celery. That means we are cooking them in butter or oil uh, until they have turned translucent, which means they're not going to have that raw taste. You're no longer a chef or cook. What are you doing now, Weave? He used to be a, a cook. That was what he was doing when I met him. I'm adding the carrots in there. Give them a little bit of a cook, too, while I start cutting up the potatoes. Retail. Oh. An interesting choice for change, but uh, good luck with that. I, I hope you uh, enjoy your new job. I need a bigger knife for the potato. Find the cut here. There's a little carrot piece. Again, your object with these potatoes and your other vegetables is to make them the same size so they cook at the same rate. <laughs> yeah, sweating the vegetables is just, I don't know why they call it that, it, probably because it starts drawing the liquid out of them. <laughs> But we'll just say partially cooking them. Oh, I love the smell of onions cooking. It's just the best. And as I said, if you want to add garlic to this, as the recipe is written here as a half recipe, uh, I wouldn't put more than um, one garlic clove in it. Uh, I think it would overpower it and it would just be very, very garlicky. Um, which really isn't what you want to be doing. So I am going to cut the, the pieces rather large because I do want them to have a good presence in the soup. I don't intend to um, I don't intend to puree this soup, so it's not going to be it's going to be a chowder like uh, soup. You're going to have chunks of potato, chunks of carrots, all of that in it, and oh, there I messed a eye that side and you could puree it if you want that would make it like a cream of potato soup um, I like to chew the things I eat so except for things like cream of tomato soup and cream of uh, asparagus those I do puree and Cream of tomato soup is one of the easiest soups in the world to make. It really is. And I'm just cutting these potatoes in half and then cutting them all into about a half inch dice there. And it's really called chopping, not dicing at this point if it's too big. So uh, then I will be putting in some salt and pepper to it, of course. Um, it comes together really nicely and relatively quickly. I mean, I'm almost to the point now where I'll be putting in the broth and bringing it to a boil. And once that happens, I have uh, 20 minutes of boiling to cook the potatoes, 15 to 20 minutes. 
And while that's happening, I'm making a white sauce. And it, like I said, it comes together really quickly. Yeah, most people do add garlic to this. Um, it is a soup I love, but it is also a soup that I can't order out. Just because those darn chefs just really love putting garlic in things. So, and since I'm allergic, that just does not do it. Okay, I'm almost done with this. And uh, these are just simply peeled um, by my husband. And I have cut out the eyes and any dark spots. Um, again, make sure that your potatoes aren't soft and squishy, don't have any huge marks on them. And, and make sure whatever it is you're cooking with is in good shape. You, you're going to be eating this. You want to make sure it is in the best condition you can have it be in. Um, you're feeding it to yourself. You're feeding it to your loved ones, possibly your friends. You want to have what you cook healthy. Uh, you don't want to do anything that's going to harm you or them. All right. So now I am going to reach all the way across the table. And I have got a vegetable broth that has no garlic in it. I have checked. And I use it instead of making it myself. And this is four cups here. I love the boxes instead of all of the cans. And I was smart this time. I actually wore a shirt that's three quarter sleeve length. So I don't have to worry about getting my sleeves dragged through everything. Okay. Side, see if I can reach the other one. You want to make sure that you've got all of the vegetables covered. Okay. That is about six cups. Two 32 ounce containers is eight cups. So uh, just so you know, and I'm keeping the rest of that because you never know, I might need extra liquid uh, to thin it if it gets too thick. So now I have the broth in there. And did I have a lid for the top of this, honey? I did, didn't I? What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Okay. This is part of the crazy hedge pig talking to herself. I do it even if I'm alone in the house. Husband's used to it. So I put the lid on here to help it come to a boil because although my um, hot plate is very, <laughs> although my hot plate is a very good hot plate, it is still a hot plate. It is a Farberware that uh, two piece uh, in here, it has two burners. And the burners, instead of being a coil, they are, solid cast iron so it takes them a little while to heat up but when they heat up it's a very even heat across the whole thing and then uh it gives you a nice radiant heat and it stays hot for a long time so uh that's a good thing now to top this i got real bacon pieces for the husband which he'll blow through this nine ounce container in no time and I found myself bacon pieces. It is bacon flavored, artificially flavored bits. And what it is, is texturized soy flour and yeast and some colors. But it doesn't have garlic in it and it doesn't have any trace of pork which I consider to be a good thing since I'm allergic to pork and garlic. And I used to have these all the time. I mean, it's what they used to put on, you know, your salads and your potatoes at cheap restaurants or if you went to like the school cafeteria and they were having 
uh, anything where you had like a salad bar and you could add bacon bits to it. This is what they had because it doesn't require refrigeration either. And uh, you can't really trust meat that you, you don't have to refrigerate, but that's okay because you know what? This is not meat. So I am going to take a couple pieces out here and taste it. That's salty and very crunchy and it's smoky, but I wouldn't really say it tasted like bacon. I can still remember what bacon was, but um, it has that smoky, salty, crunchy bit. And um, that's what I'm kind of hoping to get out of here because I've been very jealous of the recipes that I've made, like the cauliflower chowder that I made. Uh, garnished it with bacon for my husband, and he enjoyed the bacon pieces very much. Almost made it worth eating the vegetables. Maybe he thinks the bacon pieces will uh, chase away the caterpillars who may have been on there. Yes, they're not bacon, they're lies. <laughs> That's what he usually says for things. Oh, shoot, I don't have the flour out here, honey. I might have left it off the list. I can't imagine I did that, but I must have. Um, anyway, so I am going to use... I'm sorry, honey. A quarter cup of the butter, which is half of a stick or four tablespoons. Each butter dish, here, each butter stick here, if you've never paid attention. It does have the markings on it. It's not. Thank you. It is not in. Uh... <laughs> While you're up, can you get me a paper bag for the garbage, honey? I, I, I can't display this symbol on the internet. No, you cannot. Um, it has these markings on it so that you don't have to open the butter if you don't want to, or you can open it and um, just use the template for when you're cutting for where each tablespoon is. It also tells you this is a half, uh, pardon me, a quarter cup, this is a third of a cup, and this is a half cup. A whole um, stick of butter is only half of a cup. So, you know, sorry, it's rattling here. And I am getting a shopping bag as a garbage bag. And another couple pieces here. I have a table on the side. Anyway, as I was earlier saying, uh, I have, I was expecting in uh, the first of my Cooking with Hedge Pigs merchandise today. Uh, it was originally supposed to be delivered by UPS. And it was, um, it was a metal water bottle, 20 for ounce water bottle things. for um, water and cold drinks. And it has the giggling hedge pig on it and cooking with hedge pigs on the side. Uh, it was a test piece that I ordered to see what the quality of the um, item was, what their shipping was like. Um, yes, I did miss that. Oh my gosh. Curie, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. That's so generous. Thank you very, very much uh, for your donation there. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a, a warning on that one. I mean, there should have been something that blinked at me or something. Uh, noise or... Anyway. Um... <laughs> pink pig water bottles. Yes, uh, I do have one that's coming out in pink pig which you can see up there underneath my illustrated face there, you could see the pink pig emote with her cute and fluffy little layers of skirt. 
and that was made for me like all of my art here by the absolutely talented and generous glittered kitten uh, if you're a streamer and you need any uh, emotes made or artwork glittered kitten is just so awesome she's wonderful to work with and just the, an amazing person she's also a variety streamer here and I hope you uh, give her a follow if you haven't before. And she does both art streams and she does a variety of games, including The Long Dark. And anyway, so she gave me the artwork. She she made me the artwork. I did buy it from her. She didn't just give it to me. Um, and she gave me the site to go to to put together some of my merch and give it a try so assuming that the quality is good um we will be having um metal water bottles and glass um pounder glasses and there will be mugs with the giggling hedge pig and um pink pig and smiling pig on it and there will be clothing as well we've got short sleeve t-shirts long sleeve t-shirts sweatshirts and hoodies tank tops coming and uh, it's just a big variety of things and as soon as we verify that the quality is actually good um i will be we will be doing the linking for that yeah, Glittered Kitten deserves every penny she gets, the work she puts on these things, and the care she takes with her customers. It's just really good to see. Um, and this is a little over a half of a stick of butter. And I'm going to get that going. And I put that at a medium heat in to melt it because I don't want to burn the butter. And butter will burn rather rapidly if you don't pay attention. Um, well, I'm making a white sauce, and a white sauce is flour and butter in equal measure, and you need to make enough of the white sauce to actually thicken what it is you're putting it in. So yeah, just a little bit of butter. I mean, it's not gonna kill you. <laughs> they use a lot more in restaurants, I gotta tell you, because you know, a lot of salt, a lot of butter, lots of flavor in there, you know, because as a TV chef once said in a sitcom, you know, they only have to live long enough to pay the bill. <laughs> um, so I will be getting this merchandise online to you guys, and it will have Pink Pig or the Giggling Hedge Pig or well, a variety of different things. Oh, there's also stickers. And... It is available, not everything. Uh, the, for some reason, the metal water bottles are not available in Europe, but they have both a European site and a U.S. site. And so the shipping, I, I'm not having to ship from the U.S. to Europe or Australia or wherever. The people in Europe will have a Europe site so that they can you know get the local shipping there and they won't have to go overseas shipping to pay for and customs and all that um, that is not going to be something that they have to deal with which is good and um so when we put the link up for it you can go and you can look around you can shop and Get yourself a little bit of memorabilia if you wish, or, you know, not. Don't expect anybody to go and look at it, but if you want to, it's there. This place does not make me order a quantity. It is actually printed uh, when you order it. So the process for the water bottles has been, I went and I selected the water bottle I wanted, how many I wanted, and... Uh, then it, depending on how busy they are, is how soon it is to get it um, printed for you. And there is an option for about $5 extra to get it rush printed. And that will uh, 
as soon as it's printed, it then goes and is they package it and send it out to you. And so it's it's kind of a interesting process instead of a lot of the places where you'd have to be buying it and from me and then I would have to box it and ship it to you. So this way you can pay with um you know your credit card or PayPal and they also even have a um they have a uh multiple payment option. Um this place does all kinds of different clothing and equipment and gear and um so I guess some of it can add up. You know, if I were to order everything that I have an option to make, it would be quite a quite a bill. Oh, that's really delayed. Thank you so much again, Kiri, for the donation. I was really expecting. I did not hear anything, no. But at least I did see it pop up. I think we'll have to debug that after after stream. Or rather, my husband will. I just sit there and say, yeah, I can hear it. Or no, I can't hear it. You doing it again? Okay, so I've got the butter melting here. Now I need to put in an equal amount of flour. So I had a half a stick of butter, a little bit more, but not by much. And I am going to add now basically close to a third of a cup of flour. And that is the ingredients of your white sauce. It's pretty simple. And then you want to whisk it up so that it resembles wet sand. That's the consistency you're looking for. And I can get the flour out of the way. Ouch. Yes, wet sand does sound delicious, doesn't it? I am going to put it down here and I'm going to whisk it where I can see it. And I use a whisk just for simplicity's sake. Hey, badass mama. Tonight we are making loaded potato soup. And uh, I have already got the soup cooking. Um, so to recap, this is a small batch. <laughs> It's going to be less than an entire pot. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I have got in here three baked potatoes, uh, two stalks of celery, a small sweet onion, uh, half a cup of sliced carrots, and I know I do. And, uh, okay, that has come to a boil, so I can turn the heat down a little bit. Um in 20 minutes okay um it has got a half of a teaspoon of rubbed sage a tablespoon of parsley it's going to have salt and pepper in it when it's a little bit uh a little bit uh closer to being ready and it has got six cups of vegetable broth in it. And now it is going to cook until the potatoes are tender. I'm starting to work on the white sauce here. And um, I am using butter, but you can use margarine for those of you who are vegan, vegetarian, or um, just lactose intolerant or allergic. And you can use, I am using regular flour. You can use glucose, or pardon me, gluten free flour. And to add in, you can use uh, oat milk or almond milk if you like. Don't use the things that are flavored. Um, I am going to use cheese. 
um, yeah, there are vegan butters and there's vegan cream cheese. There's vegan sour cream. There's vegan cheese shreds. And all of those will be called for in this, if that is what you need to do. Um, this will have milk in it because it is a white sauce. And uh, I am also going to be adding in cream cheese, which I need to find here. And I'll melt that in. It makes an extremely, extremely velvety and smooth and rich um, sauce, basically. Um, it turns into a cheese sauce when you add the cream cheese to it. But it doesn't really say, I've got cheese in it. When you taste it, you just taste this rich, smooth, milky sauce it's absolutely wonderful and it's it's not something you can point your finger at and say "Ooh, that has cream cheese in it uh, which is kind of nice this is eight ounces of cream cheese it's one cream cheese block they also come in tubs i wouldn't use whipped cream cheese because um it's not actually the same quantity uh it has the volume but it doesn't really, it's just wrong. <laughs> um, have you tried the um, plant-based ones? Um, the one that is made from tofuti called Better Than Cream Cheese, that's uh, Better Than Cream Cheese, and it is um, silk and tofu, basically. It actually tastes a lot like cream cheese. Um, Andrew had some in some mashed potatoes that I, he, he made the mashed potatoes. I added the tofu to it in order to add protein to what I was eating. And um, he tasted it and got a, a, a lump of it that hadn't mixed in very well. And he said, hmm, tastes like cream cheese. So that's pretty good. Yeah, the tofu-based creamy stuff is really good. It's not, um, it doesn't have different flavors like um, the almond milk, uh, I think, adds. I don't actually like almond milk. I'll, I'll confess it. Um, I like, I've tried oat milk. It's really bland, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, actually, we came across something in the grocery store the other day that I got for my mom, who is allergic to milk and thus can't even eat regular chocolate. We found that Lint is now putting out an oat milk chocolate. And I tried a piece of it, and she happily ate the rest of it. And, you know, I'll be darned, tasted like chocolate. So I've got my... I have got my... Uh, white sauce here, the, the beginnings of it, the roux, as it's called, when it's flour and butter. That has cooked, and I've taken it off the heat because I'm now going to whisk in half and half. And this is about 16 ounces of half and half. And it is at room temperature, so it's less likely to cause clump. When you put a cold liquid like milk right out of the refrigerator. If you put that into a hot roux, it seizes up and makes clumps. So if you are going to, if you have the right amount, that's great. Just go ahead and leave it out until you're ready to cook. But if you don't have the right amount, measure it out and leave that out or, you know, Heat it in the microwave, not till it's hot, but just until the chill is off of it. And the cream cheese is actually been sitting out, uh, so it's at room temperature too. So I'm not going to be adding in a cold. Um, I'm not going to be adding in cold cream cheese that will make it so that this will also cool down and seize up. Yeah, I am so proud of myself that that's not a full pot. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've seen the way I cook for other things, you'll know that's quite the accomplishment for me.
Yeah, that is something that most people do. They they don't think anything of it. They measure the milk right out of the refrigerator. They put it into their they put it into their sauces. They put it into their roux, and the first thing it does is clump up. And if you have warm milk, it won't do that. You whisk it in, and it's already a like enough heat that it doesn't make the 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 best the. It doesn't make the roux basically immediately clump up, and what you've got then are actually, um, uh, well, they're dumplings, really. <laughs> so I have got this cooking on a little bit over a medium heat. You do not want to make this sauce boil. If you boil it, you stand a very good chance of uh, making it split. And I'm reducing the heat down here. You want this to be an active simmer, not a really huge boil. This is actually quite an active boil. Um, you want the vegetables to cook, but you really don't want to vaporize them. Um, once you get a the milk into your into your uh, roux, you need to keep running a whisk or a spatula or something across the bottom and the sides of this because that is where the thickening first starts, especially on the bottom. It starts at the heat source and it will make it so that what you've got is like a pudding on the bottom of your pan and it will um, burn. Um... No, you still have it's not the it's not the what it's not the fact that it is a dairy product that causes it to seize up. It's the fact that it's cold. Um so all I know is that my grandmother told me always use milk that's warm and she never had a lump in her gravy or white sauces that she made and I haven't while I did it. I have added re refrigerated milk right out of the refrigerator, and I'll be darned if that stuff didn't lump up. Um, mileage varies. It's just a tip. Use it, not use it. Whichever. It's fine. Um, so, this is just how my grandmother taught me to cook, and it's how I'm teaching y'all these recipes, so... And as I am pushing the <laughs> honey, I sounded American because I am American. Yeah, exactly. That's part of what my cookbook is about are those recipes that were made by my grandmother, my aunts, my uh, great-grandmothers, and my recipes, and recipes from my brothers, and all those things. Yes, he's teasing me. He goes, boy, you sounded American then. I am going to start adding the cream cheese a couple pieces at a time in order to not overwhelm the sauce with the milk with the uh, cheese so it will have an easier time melting and i think you've heard andrew speak on stream before he's so british i mean his accent has softened in the 12 years he's been here but uh yeah he's um he's very british it's actually kind of sounds odd to me now sometimes to talk to Americans since I'm here with them all day and I'm used to hearing his accent to the point where I don't really hear it unless he uses a word I haven't heard him use before. And then I sometimes have to ask him to repeat it. He still sometimes has to ask me to repeat things. I have no idea what I sound like to him. <laughs> Hey, LD, how are you doing? Welcome in. We have been married for 12 years, badass mama. 
Thank you for joining us, LD. We are making loaded potato soup today. I have got the potatoes and carrots, sweet onions and celery, cooking in vegetable broth with some sage and some parsley. And I am putting together the white sauce here that I am melting in some uh, cream cheese for extra lovely creaminess. Yeah, yeah. It's never over, is it? You know, you get you get done with the cooking and then you have to do the cleaning and and you then you cook again and you have to do more cleaning and well that's how you keep the, the kitchen healthy, but it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I'm talking about chefs, honey, not me. <laughs> Andrew was just laughing, saying, Yeah, you have to do the cleaning. <laughs> he does it. No, no one ever will in a professional kitchen if you run it the way you're supposed to. Let's see, I had a couple people say hello there that flicked past. Uh, Hasher, hello, good evening, welcome in. I'm glad you could join us. Uh, we have got, can we get a, a, a shout out for uh, LD2, please? He is a variety streamer and a professional chef who occasionally does cooking streams as well, but he does a lot of the um, long, dark streams. He's kind of considered a pillar in that community. I am chopping up the cream cheese here and adding in some more. My sauce is getting very thick, so it's... <gasps> Ow! And the pot is really hot. <laughs> in case you didn't know. <laughs> wow. Um, brushing that with my arm was not the best idea in the world. So I am going to keep lifting this here and the heat will melt the cream cheese and it will turn nice and creamy and smooth. And it's thickening gradually. It is um, it is about the thickness now, I would say, of uh, frosting that's not quite stiff enough. It is uh, runny mashed potato texture, basically, thickness. And that's what we want to thicken the um, vegetable broth that is in my potato soup. I hate living in an apartment. Oh, our upstairs neighbors are so loud. Okay, that sauce is ready to be added in. I'm going to turn the heat off that was under that. And we are almost to the 20 minute mark on the soup. So I am going to check and see if the potatoes are done. So, oh, I need a. Uh, I need a ladle, honey. I forgot a ladle. You see, that's a nice average size piece of potato. What? I forgot a ladle. And I'm going to test this to see how tender it is. The knife goes through it very easily, so the potatoes are actually done. And I am going to set this aside and turn the heat pretty far down because the soup is basically done once I add this into it. Actually, I'm going to move that really off to the side. And I am now going to put this cheese, very thick cheese sauce into the potato soup. Okay, so maybe it's not a half pot. Maybe it's more like three quarters once I put this into it. <laughs> okay, you all can laugh now. It's official. I did not make a small batch. I just tried. So now I need to mix this in and it will be melted by the... Did you hear him laugh? <laughs> 
No. I'm so sorry, LD. So I have got the basic soup put together here. I need to mix the uh, cheese sauce basically through it enough that it actually melts all the way and is, and is well combined. Won't have any lumps of cream cheese in it then or any, you know, thick balls of the stuff from where it hasn't been incorporated. Thank you, sweetheart. It's my food. You can't look at it. <laughs> I was proud I hadn't fully filled it. Yes, I was, and yet now I have. What am I, silly, silly little hedge pig? I'm going to put this back on the heat for a minute while I get out some of the things that are going to uh, be added on it. So I have got a Nice soup crock here, and it has some dust in the bottom. I that out so there's no dust in it. And it is a lovely little soup bowl. It's actually made to be uh, cooked in the oven, so you could make French onion soup in this, where you make the soup, pour it in, and you put a uh, crouton over the top of it and then cheese and then you broil it in the oven. Absolutely yummy soup. I have got to get out the real bacon bits, which I'm not actually going to touch because that would be bad. And I have got some grated cheddar cheese. Everything you might want to put on a actual baked potato. I've got sour cream and I have got a green onion here that I'm going to very carefully dice up the top of. And put on the top of the soup. And now that LD is here. I'll be nervous about my slicing skills because I know I'm not fast. He'd probably be done with five of them by now. <laughs> and this is just used as a garnish on the top. It's not actually going to be stirred into the soup. You need to actually bring me a second bowl, honey, so I can taste it. Oh, okay. He was going to have me do mine with the fake bacon on it first. So, if he insists. And I'm going to use some of the white, too, instead of just all the green part. Carefully shoof that out of the way. Again, that is a technical term. Uh, back up, back me up on this, LD. Uh, shoof is a cooking term for getting things out of the way. Now I have got my soup here, and the flavors will combine even better. This soup is going to be so much more flavorful and yummy tomorrow. I am going to get out a nice serving of it. Make sure I have every little bit. I used rainbow carrots, so it would be pretty. So I have got soup there. I'm going to wipe down the edge. And then I'm going to start adding the bits to it that make it fancy and special mm -hmm. and extra yummy. 
So I'm going to take the cheddar cheese. Here's the soup as it is. Pretty unremarkable white soup here. And then I'm going to add in some cheddar cheese on top. Got to have the cheddar cheese. And then I am going to add in a dollop of sour cream because I like sour cream on my mat on my potatoes. So I'm going to and you can make this with fat free sour cream if you want. You can make it with fat free um, cream cheese if you want. If it's if you make it with tofuti or with other vegan products, it is fat free. Um, so I'm going to add a dollop of cream cheese to it, or sour cream to the top, which kind of sinks in because it's heavy. And then I am going to add some of my bacon bits. Lies. We're calling it bacon bit. Andrew calls it lies. I am putting lies on the top of it. And then I am taking some of the green onion. Take that away and take pictures of it, and then I can't wait to taste it. Meanwhile, do you want cream? Do you want sour cream on yours, honey? No, thank you. I'm sour right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay, so I have got this and I've got my spoon and I'm now going to take a nice bit of this and some potato and all of the toppings in it. I'm going to put a little little bit of this. And it's hot. It's steaming. So I'm not going to burn my face off. Andrew, by the way, said want to bet. He's probably right. Oh, that is good. As I said, the vegetable stock, as I use vegetable stock with it instead of ch uh, chicken stock, it doesn't add any off flavors. It's all vegetables in here. The potatoes are tender and melt away at your mouth. You can taste that luscious, creamy sauce, the sour cream, the uh, cheddar cheese, those little bacon bits. I don't care. It's as close to bacon as I can get. So it's good enough for me. And then the green onion. It is basically a loaded baked potato in soup form. And it's just, I'm going to have to have another bite. Oh, that's just so lovely. I highly recommend this. It came together so easily. And adding the um, cream cheese to my recipe, which never had the cream cheese in it before, adds an extra richness to the soup. It's just absolutely yummy. I do hope you give this all a try. The recipe will be up after stream on my Discord. And um, Pictures will be up soon to follow. I will be streaming on Wednesday night. So please join me for that. We are going to go raid Ocelot 1961. He is a returned TLD player who's uh, 
got a lot of knowledge, and he's a wonderful guy. So I do hope you come with me to the raid. I hope you try this soup and enjoy it. And we will see you again Wednesday night. Thank you all for coming. Again, Carrie, thank you so much for the donation. I thank all of you who have given me some of your holiday weekend. Thank you for coming.